Okay, to get your software downloaded, you're going to want to go out to the Oracle Tech Network. And actually, if you just go to Google and type Oracle Database Download, you'll probably get here. But what you're going to want to end up as Database 12C and Downloads. And you're going to want this Linux x86-64. And then you'll see uh, the files that you need to download. So if you click uh, See All here. You'll have the opportunity to download these two uh, scripts right at the top of the page. You'll have to accept the license agreement. And then uh, you want to make sure that your um, Firefox instance that is in here is set to download these files to that IMB file that we carved out specifically for these. So if you've got that all set up, then all you have to do is actually uh, click the files to download them and wait for that process to complete. Alright, once you've got those files downloaded, you should see two zip files that look like this. And to un once you unzip them, they're going to create this database directory that you see right here, which will be the source of our... Uh, install uh, where we run our installer from so uh, in order to unzip these files it's very simple you're just going to type unzip and then the file name and if you just hit the tab key it'll auto complete you'll want to do the one of two first and then you're after this file unzips just go ahead and unzip the second one using the same command they'll place all their folders in that database directory and you'll be ready to start your install. So after you complete that operation, which will probably take about five minutes or so, you'll want to switch to your database directory and then when you do a list you'll see that there's a run installer right in the middle and that is going to be how we start our install. Type uh, dot slash run installer and hit the enter key and uh, wait about a minute and an installer window will pop up and we can begin our installation. Okay, now we have our installer up and running. I'm just going to uncheck uh, the options to be notified about any updates because this is just a development machine. And I'm going to go ahead and create and configure a database. And then I'm actually going to choose the server class version of the database because I want to check a few options that uh, aren't available to you in the desktop class uh, install screens. We're just going to do a, a single instance database installation. And then I'm going to click advanced install to make sure I get the options that I want to select. Picking my uh, native language. Going with the enterprise edition here. And then you can see that this uh, installer assumes the existence of the U01 directory that we created, and uh, that's the reason that we do it. There's actually a whole white paper out there about uh, why the uh, Oracle structures uh, directories like this, and I'd encourage you to go look for that and read about it. And we're just going to let it go ahead and pick the directories that it wants to use inside of that U01 directory that we had created for uh, this very purpose of installing the database. And uh, there's really two different forks in a road you can go here. We're just going to stick with the general purpose database. And uh, we're not going to talk about what the differences between those two types are right now. And then here you can see it's going to go ahead and pick a global database name based on the host name or host domain that this machine is associated with. 
and then uh, it's got sort of this base Oracle system identifier and pluggable database name. I'm going to go ahead and keep those. Know that you can change these to uh, whatever you want them to be, uh, but you know, for my purposes, uh, this will be fine for now. And then this container database is really a new function in 12C where they've made it possible to sort of pick what is unique about what any one database instance and unplug it and plug it back into any other Oracle database 12C server. So it really is a, a pretty amazing piece of functionality that almost lets the database server uh, act um, kind of like a, a virtual database machine. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about this uh, a little later in the semester. But for uh, all intents and purposes, when you're connecting to this database, it'll seem just like any other database in the world. So we're going to go ahead and let it uh, create this container database. Now we'll just let it uh, pick out sort of the uh, base parameters for, for RAM based on what's configured for this particular virtual machine. This is a very small instance. This we obviously never apply with a production instance of a database, but this should be sufficient, uh, sufficient for what we want to do. Two things I'm going to change here is I'm not going to take the default character set. I'm actually going to use Unicode uh, because I just run into problems uh, associated with, with not using this. And you'll see this is kind of the recommended uh, approach to take. And I believe it's something that's uh, not easy to change after the fact. And then I'm also going to uh, make sure that they create all of the sample schemas for this database. Oracle provides a number of examples about how to use the various functions on the database and including these sample schemas is great because often that's exactly what those examples are based on. So if you have these sample schemas and data in place, uh, you can follow along with their examples and actually do the exercises that are detailed in some of those. So now I'm going to click Next. I'm going to let it uh, just put the data files where it wants to. If we were in a non-desktop type environment here, a non-virtual machine, then this would be something you probably want to think about quite a bit more. I'm not going to use the Enterprise Manager Cloud Control. Uh, that is for when you are really managing multiple database instances across multiple machines. I'm going to go ahead and just use a local version of the Enterprise Manager to look after this particular database. I'm not going to worry about enabling recovery here because we're not uh, using a database that we're really concerned about uh, being able to recover uh, data at a later, later point if something goes wrong. And then here just wants me to set the, the base passwords for the users that are uh, important on the system here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check to use the same password for all in a development environment. It's just a lot easier to remember if you don't make it difficult on yourself. And now I'll just uh, again let the defaults for the group selection uh, go with what the installer is, is picking. These are things you might uh, think about a little bit more if you were in a production setting. And now uh, the installer is actually going to go through and validate uh, that it has all the software libraries it needs and there are no concerns about uh, actually getting started with the install. And uh, you can actually save a response file, which is uh, sort of a record of all these selections you've made. And I always suggest doing that because sometimes it's easy to forget. You know, the location of stuff or certain users and that type of stuff. And if you save this response file, uh, then you can always refer to it and uh, perhaps find some of that information that you might have otherwise lost. 
I'm just going to put it on the desktop of this machine. Uh, incidentally, you can use these response files to uh, automate the creation of databases as well. And in fact, uh, this is probably the way that uh, uh, Amazon is doing it under the hood when they create a, a database for you. Uh, they're just uh, feeding all these parameters to essentially this installer and doing what's called a silent install where you just give it the answers to all of its questions and it goes ahead and, and creates a database instance without ever talking to you. Obviously we're using the wizard here so uh, we're, we're, we're going to interact with the system. You can see that response file is saved on my desktop in case I ever need to refer to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click install. And then this process will take uh, quite a while. There will be a point here, maybe a few minutes in, maybe halfway down, uh, where it's going to ask me to uh, execute some scripts as a root user on the operating system that will sort of be the sort of the final piece of configuration that we have to be involved in as a user. So uh, just keep an eye on it, and uh, maybe five minutes or so, you'll you'll see that message. And this total process may take, you know, somewhere between ten and twenty minutes to actually get the database installed.